Moving averages are an important part of the technical analysis toolkit, and I'm often asked about the different types of moving averages, particularly simple versus exponential moving averages. So today we're going to dig in a little bit to the different types of moving averages, particularly the two most common types, simple, which are the most common, and exponential moving averages, which are arguably a better measure of trend over time. We'll talk about how these moving averages are related, why it could make sense to use one versus the other. I think both of them actually have a place potentially in your toolkit. Before we get to the charts, by the way, if you like this sort of thinking about technical analysis, market history, investor sentiment won't you subscribe to my channel? Also give the video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Put a comment below the video if you could. Which of these moving averages do you use, simple or exponential and why? Looking at the chart here, I started with United Health Group, uh, UNH. You can use any chart really to understand the differences between them, but I think this one in particular, because it's recently rotated from an uptrend to a consolidation phase to a downtrend, I thought it was a good example to sort of show the relationship between these moving averages. Now I'm actually showing two of them right now. In green, we have the 50-day exponential moving average, and in blue, we have the 50-day simple moving average. Now, what are these actually telling you? A simple moving average is the most common. That's where you actually take X number of days. So if you have a 50-day simple moving average, you literally take the last 50 closing prices, you add them all up, you divide it by 50, and there's your current value. So it's a simple mean looking at the last X number of days. It's commonly used and easiest to use because it's the most simple to calculate. You literally just have to be able to calculate an average price, right? A mean mean value to that average and uh, easy to do with uh, by hand if you would need to, which is how it really was uh, was started. Uh, but also, you know, if you have an Excel spreadsheet, it's pretty easy to do a, a simple average and, and roll that over time. So it's called a moving average because you have a look back window and then that average uh, follows along with the price over time. So it's a moving average price. Now, an exponential average does something a little different. Instead of waiting each day the same, and that's sort of one of the challenges of the simple moving average. Think about it today or what's happening today versus 49 days ago, they have an equal weight because right? it's a simple average. So, But arguably, what happened today is probably a little more important than what happened 50 days ago, right? In terms of the importance of the data set and uh, uh, relative to the data set over time. So an exponential average actually tries to fix that by using what's called an exponential weighting. Basically, every day you have a new observation, a new closing price, and that most recent closing price is given a certain weight, a percentage weighting. Now, we don't really call it a 5% or 10% exponential average. Use a calculation and actually use a day count so that it's more similar to other moving average types, right? So you can look at a, you know, an X day exponential moving average. What it's actually doing is it's using a calculation to weight the current data a certain percent. And then the previous day's value is the other percent. So every day you have a new observation that has a chunk on the weight and then the rest is everything else. So as a result, over time, the, um, uh, you know, every every observation, the most recent data is, is termed the most or is deemed the most important. So it's probably a better way. It's a more reactive moving average. Looking at the chart, you can see what I mean here. So you can notice that in general, when the market turns higher, the green moving average actually goes up quicker, right? More quickly. When the price goes back down, you can see the green moving average slopes uh, downwards and actually goes in a downtrend more quickly. Let's look at this part in particular here. This is the second quarter of 2022. You can see that UNH was making a new 52-week high, then it started to sell off. Look at how the exponential average started to roll over. That's the one in green. But the blue one, the uh, simple moving average, continued to go higher. That's because the simple average is just looking at the last X number of days. And because you had prices so far above, those are still having a pretty decent weight. The exponential moving average in green is more reacting to the sudden sell-off. And every day we move lower, it's bringing the exponential average down with it. So as a result, the exponential average usually will change direction more quickly than a simple moving average. It, it, not always, but, but almost all of the time, to be honest with you. That's how you tend to think of it. You can see then once uh, UNH made a new low in June and started to rotate higher, the exponential average rotated higher uh, soon, uh, you know, obviously well before the uh, simple moving average. And then you can see that the 50-day simple moving average eventually uh, crossed above there. 
Now, the differences that I just showed you in a lot of ways can be very subtle. And depending on the price dynamics of the chart you're looking at, you might not see much of a difference. And to be honest, like right about now, does it matter which of these 50 day moving averages confirm the fact that we're in a downtrend because the price is below the downward sloping moving average? No, if you use the simple or the exponential, you're getting a very similar reading on the chart, right? So that's the reason why there's a difference in terms of the calculation. And that's also why while the differences are important in terms of the reactivity of the moving averages, a lot of times you won't find much of a difference, which is why a lot of people don't pay too much attention to it. But here's why it could be uh, could be valuable. Why is it important to use the 200 day simple moving average? So this is the default chart that I use on stock charts. So if you ask me, what do you think of insert stock ticker here? This is the chart I usually start with 99% of the time. And you can see that it has the price with the 50 and 200 day simple moving averages, and then other indicators like RSI and relative strength. Now, why do I use the simple moving averages if we just determine that the exponential averages are a better, you know, more reactive moving average and actually gives you a better read of the trend? The reason is because these moving averages are what most people use. And so I have found if you can look at charts that I know other people are looking at and making decisions based off of, that's what I want to use. I've worked with thousands of institutional investors so far over my career. And I would say most of them, if not all of them, when they look at a chart of a stock or of an ETF, it probably has the 200 day moving average and most likely has the 50 day moving average as well. Even if they're not big technically oriented investors, everyone seems to know where the 200 day moving average is. A lot of trading desks that I've worked with, they will always know where the price is relative to the 200 day because they know that's an important measure that others are following. So I would say there's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy when a price breaks the 200 day, when a price hits the 200 day and reverts, a lot of people are watching that. A lot of people use that as part of their general analytical approach. So I find that that is the starting point of when I'm trying to evaluate a stock. Those are the moving averages that I like to use. But if I was designing a trading system, I would certainly not use simple moving averages. I would most likely use exponential moving averages because of the difference, the more sensitive uh, the sensitivity, the increased sensitivity that we established on the first chart that we showed you. This is my market trend model. I have another video on my channel where I break this down in a little more detail. I'll put a link in the description. But uh, my market trend model uses weekly data and it uses the S&P 500. I also run it on other asset classes and other indexes as well, but this is the main market trend model that I created. And it uses weekly exponential moving averages as a way of defining the trend on three time frames a long-term time frame medium-term time frame and short-term time frame i update that model every friday and it's based on the most recent reading of those weekly exponential moving averages so when i was trying to design a trend following mechanism to help me track trends over different time frames and make sure that i was understanding the trends at work in the markets it was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to use exponential moving averages. And as I tested this model and created it years ago, the exponential averages just were a much better gauge of the trend. So that's it. That's what a simple moving average is versus an exponential moving average, why they are different, how the exponential averages are much more sensitive to price uh, movements, particularly inflection points than a simple moving average, but why both of them can have value. The simple moving average because so many investors and traders use them. So I think I like using things that I know lots of other people managing lots of money are also using, but the exponential moving averages can be helpful. If you're designing a system or a trend following mechanism of some sort, the exponential average is probably a much better gauge of the actual trend at work. If you like this sort of thinking about technical analysis and behavioral finance, subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, and put a comment below. Which of those moving averages do you use and why? For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, talk to you soon.